Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Howard Yermish, John Atwood, and Pat. Coming up on DTNS, why Meta is campaigning against the Leap Second. Also, we'll explain what a Leap Second is. Logitech's inclusive computer accessories and the Instagram backlash signals the end of the social networking era forever. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, July 26, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In the Big Apple, I'm Ayaz Akhtar. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Oh, my goodness. We have Kardashians. We have Backlash. We have Leap Seconds. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. In an internal memo, Shopify told employees it will cut roughly 1,000 workers or 10% of its global workforce in response to slowing growth after a hiring boom due to the pandemic. Shopify obviously is not the only company to be scaling back at this point. CEO Toby Lutke says the layoffs are necessary as consumers resume old shopping habits and pull back on the online orders that fueled the company's growth over the last two plus years. By old shopping habits, he means the shopping habits of the late 70s when nobody bought anything. Uh, (laughs) Autonomous trucking startup Kodiak Robotics says it completed a commercial run between Texas, California, and Florida for 10 Roads Express, a USPS mail carrier. So this is autonomous trucks going from Texas to California to Florida and back. It's Kodiak's first time running an autonomous freight service to Florida and is a total 5,600-mile round trip. They started in San Antonio, went to San Francisco, California, and then to Jacksonville, Florida, before ending up back in San Antonio. The trip took 114 hours total. And if you're like, hold on, it's illegal to test or deploy heavy-duty autonomous commercial vehicles in California right now. Kodiak's head of external affairs, Dan Goff, says that when they crossed the border into California, they operated a level two system, which is advanced driver assistance. So you basically had the human in charge for the part where they went to San Francisco and back. Uh, that's the news on Kodiak Robotics. Alibaba announced it's applying for a primary listing on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that's in addition to its already U.S. listing, set to be in effect by the end of this year, 2022. Right now, Alibaba has a secondary listing in Hong Kong. For context, in its first six months of 2022, Alibaba's average daily trading volume in the Hong Kong market was about 700 U.S. dollars, or 700 million U.S. dollars, rather, compared to 3.2 billion in the U.S. Yeah, slowly clawing all those tech companies back into China. Uh, there's a race on to gather enough materials to make electric vehicles. We mentioned recently Ford locking up contracts for battery supplies. Now GM says it's reached a deal with Korea's LG Chem to ensure a supply of cathode active materials, or CAM, a material that makes up about 40 percent of the cost of an average EV battery cell. GM says it should be enough to make 5 million EVs between the end of this year and 2030. Uh, They're also building two battery factories in North America in conjunction with LG Chem and will source lithium for batteries from geothermal deposits in the U.S. Inflation eventually comes for everyone. (laughs) Six months after Amazon announced Amazon Prime, prices were going up in the United States. Now, you might be a Prime member and say it's worth it, Amazon Prime prices are also now rising in Europe, though. The new price hikes come into effect September 15th, 2022, and vary widely across the region. So, for example, in France, customers will pay an extra 43% on the existing 49 euro cost. In Germany, it will be 30% more on 69 euros. And in the UK, uh, the UK will see a 20% on top of their 75 pound fee. The price changes affect all new members and also renewals. So it will affect you if you're a Prime member. In other inflationary news, Meta announced it will raise the price of the Quest 2 by $100 in August. Hey, that means the base model goes from $299 to $399, and the 256 gigabyte model from $399 to $499. Uh, yeah, big price hikes there. Meta says costs to make and ship the Quest 2 have risen. Uh, they also are going to throw in Beat Saber. But that only that only cost you thirty dollars if you bought it separately, so it doesn't quite I, make up. For I mean, the, the I could just go on and on about how beats. They also promised they'll never track. They didn't say that. All right, <laughs> uh, let's talk 
accessories. Sarah, oh, what do we got? Oh, Tom, I'm glad you asked. A few interesting ones that got introduced in the last day or so. We'll start with Razer's new mechanical keyboards, the Death Stalker V2. Yes, that's actually the name. Wireless V2 Pro and V2 Pro 10 Keyless. Features improved optical mechanical switches that should last longer and respond more quickly if you like that sort of thing. And you can either choose a click or linear low profile switch in all three of those models. The two wireless models can either be Bluetooth or RF with a low latency dongle. The V2 Pro is available now for $250. The other two come in Q3. I mean, if you're into these, these uh, Deathstalker keyboards uh these are nice improvements I, I i don't know that they're for for everybody but they're you're nice, a mechanical they're nice keyboard person though aren't you tom i am i am but yeah. i'm also a very old don't give me leds i'm going to use my logitech k120 until it dies and then pull the old one out of the closet which is actually what i did last year <laughs> I don't know, I has, what, what, yeah what about you yeah. these prices seem right or uh, no, not to me, because I, I usually go with the cheapest keyboard possible that has travel that doesn't suck. That's my big thing with, with keyboards. I'm looking at these prices. I'm looking at the lights, and I'm thinking, my kid's going to love this. He's becoming a gamer. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, now I have to worry about actually hearing the clicky clacks. I mean, when we do video a lot. You don't want to be able to hear the keyboard. And my mic's here and my keyboard's there. So I usually avoid this. That means I'm going to be hearing this and being asked for this in no time flat. I don't see that the clicky keyboards are a problem on live video, right? No, not at all. <laughs> I don't uh, hear anything. Tom, you know, we always know when Tom's got something to say. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Meanwhile, Logitech announced its Aurora collection of PC gaming accessories designed to be more inclusive. The $230 mm. headset has LEDs around the ear cups and Braille on each sidearm to identify left and right. It's designed to work better for smaller heads, earrings, and glasses, and offers different colored boom mics and ear pads. There are also keyboards with LEDs, a volume wheel, and a cloud-shaped wrist rest for $170 wired or $200 wireless, and a $100 wireless mouse designed to work better with smaller hands. Battery life on all three is low, 40 hours for the mouse, 25 for the keyboard, and 56 for the headset if the LEDs are off. Mm, which These they are, probably wouldn't be if you wanted to use the headset yeah. to its Why full Why get that headset capacity. if you don't want the fancy glowy LEDs? Uh, th these are supposed to be a, a little bit accessible. I like the accessibility feature, the one accessibility feature, um, and also appeal to women, Sarah. Uh, Speak for all be women. Because we have small to hands, Tom? I don't know. I mean, it, anytime I hear like, ooh, something for small-handed people, I'm like, that's me. I actually don't use mice. I, you know, mm. I, I'm a I'm a trackpad person. I have been for years. I mean, I can use a mouse. I'm capable of using one. Um, but it's not, it's not a peripheral that I'm all that interested in. However, uh, if uh, accessibility is of interest to you, I think this sort of stuff, you know, the, the more the merrier, really. Mm -hmm. 40 hours for a, you know, battery life for a mouse means you're charging that thing every single night, you know, yeah. as, yeah. as you as you decide I'm done with the computer, you know, that 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 has to be something that you work into your repertoire. But uh, but it's possible. I, you know, I'd, I'd be curious to see who out there says, yes, this is exactly the thing I've been waiting for and I can't wait to buy it. And I think the price is right. At least they'd made them more than just pink. Which they also did, but they pink didn't want gadgets upset me. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with pink. If you like pink, great. Just don't like it marketed towards women. All right, we got one more. Anchor revealed its third gen gallium nitride, aka GAN chargers, called GAN Prime, automatically adjusting power to the needs of the device, checking every three minutes, monitoring temperature three million times per day. So they're really on top of it, Anchor is. There are six models available in the US as of now from the 65 watt 735, which has a USB A and two USB C ports for $60 on up to the 150 watt 747 with one USB-A and three USB ports, USB-C ports for $110. There are also variations with AC power outlet if you're interested in that as well. Yeah, I mean, if you're into GAN chargers, great GAN chargers, decent prices, uh, wonderful selection of ports, whatever your port needs, what's not to love? Mm -hmm. The Earth's rotation is not something not to love it's something to to love it keeps us uh, grounded to the ground but it doesn't fit perfectly <laughs> into our system of timekeeping it slows down and speeds up like any spinning object and over time has been generally slowing down that means our machine run clocks even if they're pegged to an atom 
dripped out of sync by very small amounts, but scientists often need to be accurate within very small amounts. So 27 times since 1972, folks added a leap second to the official UTC clock to bring it back into sync. And the way this happens is the clock will say 2359.59, 2359.60, which usually doesn't happen, and then all zeros. Yeah, so the thing is, computers, they don't handle this well. You can tell a computer that there are 86,400 seconds in a day, and it's going to handle that just fine. You can even tell a computer to change that number on a regular period, like add an extra day every four years, for instance. But it does not deal well with the irregular addition of a leap second. It expects 59 to be followed by 00. zero. If the atomic clock tells it 59 is followed by 60, well, it goes poorly. In fact, it deals so poorly with leap, leap seconds that it caused outages on Reddit, LinkedIn, and Yelp, among other sites, in 2012. It caused fewer problems, but still caused problems in 2015 and 2016. So what's the solution? Get rid of it. At least that's what meta makers of fine products like Facebook and advertising say. Uh, two meta production engineers wrote posts called, It's Time to Leave the Leap Second in the past, get it? Uh, Meta says it uses a method called smearing that was pioneered by Google to avoid the 59 to 60 problem. Uh, it slows down its clock and spreads a leap second over 17 hours, but that means the system is open to problems, especially if there's an outage during that smearing period. So it doesn't love that as a solution. Instead, they recommend we, quote, stop the future introduction of leap seconds and remain at the current level of 27, which we believe will be enough for the next millennium. The argument runs that since the leap second, quote, mainly benefits scientists and astronomers, end quote, it's easier and less harmful in general for the scientists and astronomers to ad adapt their software to the lack of a leap second than to make everyone else correct UTC for everyone on the planet. And Meta is not alone on this. CNET reports that Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, as well as heavy hitters in the international measurement community, like the U.S. National Institute of, S of Standards and Technology, NIST, and France's BIPM, which I call BIPM, are all on board as well. I have yeah, to say, I've I mean, come around it, on pre this. Pretty much everybody is like, how many folks will be confused by this? How many astronomers will be pleased by this? Let's go with all of the people who will be confused by this. Yeah. We got not, a millennium. Not you know, many people. All, not, none of us will, will be around by the time this is a real issue. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great, right? Let's kick it down the road to when we're all dead. Let someone else deal with it. Yeah, um, you know, great grandkids, they'll deal with it. I've come around on this. When I first saw the story, I thought, oh, sure, just discount the scientists because you're an engineer who doesn't want to deal with it. The more I read about it, the more I realized, yeah, it causes a lot of work for people to adapt to something that is of limited utility. And it's not mm -hmm. like we can't add a leap minute at some point when we need it to correct everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that if you're an astronomer, you're probably yelling at me right now. And I, I, I totally get that. But it, I, I think maybe Meta's right on this one. Yeah, I looked at this and I first thought, okay, how much of an impact is this going to have on real life? Like, will, will sunset change from like, let's say 4.30 in the afternoon to like four o'clock? Is that going to screw up everybody's timing? But looking at this, talking about it ahead of time, it's like, it's going to be a minuscule change for a thousand years. And then I was reading the, <laughs> the Facebook post talking about in the case we have to remove a second, some software doesn't like the fact that time goes backwards. Time yep. can't go backwards in programming. So that's going to screw up a lot of things. So I don't like the idea of kicking it down the road, but if you're going to have specialized uh, software for specialized communities, maybe that is the software that needs to be tweaked and not necessarily everything else that can get bricked because we're trying to be technically accurate, which is the best kind of accurate, but the, the negative time thing really frightens me, but that's, that could also be a scare tactic for all I know. Normally I like the idea of just having one standard for time, no matter who you are, this is the most accurate time. So it, it it's countered to my, my nature to advocate for two separate time streams, but that's essentially what this says is let astronomers adapt and have their own set of time and let everyone else just live without the leap second for a little longer. And, and, and it all comes down to the Earth. It's the Earth's fault. If the Earth just rotated on a standard rotation, we wouldn't have this issue.
Oh, always blaming the Earth. What do you want to go to Mars next, Tom? Jeez, you know what yeah, I actually found? Mars has Mo- the same problem. <laughs> right, you know, it's just colder. Uh, Meta, the the fact that Meta said, okay, so the technique we're using, which is something that Google invented, the smearing technique to slow down a clock and spread that leap second over seventeen hours. That was really interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, that is a teeny tiny little piece of a second uh, over, you know, the better part of a day. Uh, Did not know this was happening. So quite a hack. Like it really is in the the sense of like a workaround. Right. And at the same time, you know, at least the engineers at Meta saying, okay, we can do this, but it doesn't really, you know, it's, 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 it's unnecessary work when we could just say, let's not, let's not even do it. And it can cause other problems. You know, it's, it's not risky in the sense of like, you know, world ending, but, but yeah, if your computer goes out in the middle of the smear, it's hard to recover from that because you Mm -hmm. don't know where you were. All right. uh, Here's some uh, even more frightening news. Dan Campos from NTX has a quick update on loan applications, not the pieces of paper, but apps, apps that let you borrow money that are run by criminals. Hello, DTNS crew. In Mexico, more than 100 instant loan applications have emerged, which are used by montadeudas, which is a form of organized crime focused on extortion, fraud and robbery, thanks to the data obtained by operating these applications. After requesting the loan, the montadeudas demand advance payments and use social networks such as Facebook, Twitter or WhatsApp to threaten, attack and defame the person who requested the loan as well as their relatives and contacts, publishing photos, documents, contacts, or videos obtained from the intervened cell phone. Applications such as GoPeso, Cashbox, Peso Prestamo are used some of the 129 applications that are cataloged in this category, with 35 of them available in the Google Play Store. The Congress of Mexico City has requested the investigation of these applications by the local cyber police. For more information about this, check the latest episode of Noticias de Tecnología Express. Back to you, amigos. And and today I learned the word montadeudas. Uh, Mm -hmm. So thank you, Dan, for that. And go check out more at NTX, Noticias de Tecnología Express. If you have a thought about something on the show, but you don't know our email address, you're an astronomer who's like, I'm also against the leap second. Uh, Email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Recently, Instagram changed what appears in its main feed. Instead of an algorithmically determined order of photos from people you follow, it offers an algorithmically determined mix of photos and videos from not only the people you follow, but also people it thinks you might be interested in, even if you don't follow them. Uh, In Instagram's words back in March, it is adding, quote, recommendations to your feed based on your interests. They know better than you what you're interested in. Uh, And... Whenever you change something, it brings opposition. Sometimes it brings opposition from trend-setting celebrities like Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian, or both. When Kylie Jenner tweeted in 2018 that she didn't use Snapchat anymore, it was the modern equivalent of Frank Sinatra saying, I think it's going to rain, in a club. A lot of people left. And Snap's stock market value dropped more than $1 billion. So, Sarah, what did they say this time? Well, the two celebrities and sisters posted the following text to Instagram stories on Monday saying, make Instagram Instagram again. Stop trying to be TikTok. I just want to see cute photos of my friends. Sincerely, everyone. An X as in, you know, a kiss. Uh, Kylie Jenner has 360 million followers on Instagram. Kim Kardashian has 326 million. There's obviously a lot of overlap there, still reaching a lot of folks. The posts have more than 1.6 million likes and resulted in nearly 140,000 signatures on a petition started by the fashion photographer Tati Brewing. Tuesday, Instagram head Adam Masseri, wearing a lovely saffron shirt and gold pendant necklace, shared a video on Twitter. He clarified that a full screen version of the Instagram feed is just a test. If you're seeing that, that, that's not what anybody had been talking about. But in case you saw that, it's a, it's a test. He says in his words, quote, it's not yet good. And they're not going to roll it out to everybody till they make it good. He also said that they are going to continue to support photos, but added, I do believe more and more of Instagram will become video over time just because that's what people are posting. People are posting more videos. They're watching more videos. So it doesn't really matter that they're forcing all of you to watch more videos. He also reminded folks that if they don't like recommendations in their feed, you can X them out. Uh, you can you can click on the little three-dot menu and say, don't show me that. You can snooze recommendations for a month 
A lot of people might not have known that. Uh, or you can just go to the following feed, which is confusing because it's a drop down menu from the Instagram logo that says it's already checked, but you still have to tap it if you actually want to see your following feed. Anyway, it does feel like maybe we're reaching a sea change for social networking, doesn't it? It does. It does. Uh, this Instagram issue, along with Facebook's redesign, uh, very recent redesign to include more algorithmically selected content, more or less viral content that you may not see otherwise, not to mention the rise of TikTok and the troubled sale of Twitter, which is ongoing, has led to Axios's Scott Rosenberg to declare that this is the end of the social networking era, which began with the rise of Friendster in 2003. Rosenberg uh, believes that discovery engines like TikTok will compete with streaming services like Netflix for attention on one end, and messaging apps like Signal and WhatsApp will be the province of small group and personal communications. This would leave that big middle, the space once dominated by forums, message boards, open for rising stars such as Discord. I'll be honest. I think Rosenberg might be right. I mean, considering Friendster was in 2003, it's about time for a sea change. And once he explained this idea of, yeah, you've got YouTube, Netflix, TikTok, they're all just competing for the same attention space in your brain, which is, I want to watch a thing. I want to watch an entertaining thing that makes me laugh or cry or whatever, uh, versus social networking which was, I want to interact with people, whether they're my friends or new friends or online friends. And instead, we're doing group chats, which we do with our closest friends and family, but we don't meet strangers. So there is this wide open space out there for casual acquaintances uh, to interact. And I, and I feel like I feel like Facebook and Instagram are all chasing the TikTok dream, which up until now has worked for Instagram. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel like it's working this time because, and, and this is just one data point because it's just me, obviously, but I have found myself reading Instagram less because I go into the feed and I see stuff I don't follow and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not, not, not that interested and I put it down. I mean, this is obviously some sort of wide rollout. Uh, my Instagram has not changed. Everything I'm seeing in my feed is just people that I follow, uh, accounts that I follow. I don't necessarily know everybody, but I, I I manually followed everybody. So The recommendation thing is rolling out wide. So what Moseri would say is, Sarah, you are getting recommendations to things you don't follow, but we're good at it with you. We're just not good at it with Tom. because it but, but it's be all people everywhere. I follow. I mean, that they can't be 100% right that they would yeah. recommend all of that stuff. That's it odd. Doesn't, it That's doesn't odd. really matter to me. What, mm. what, what will matter to me is... If the experience that I have, and you know, I used to be, you know, I post on Instagram, you know, I try to post at least once a day. Uh, you know, there's so many things to take beautiful photos of. It is not that social network anymore. It is if you want it to be, but that's not what the company itself is is hoping to go for. It's hoping to go in another direction. I've been I've been wondering for years. I, I don't want to say I've been predicting this for years because lots of people have, but I've just been wondering for years, yeah, when does the Facebook thing start to break down? And when I say the Facebook thing, I'm talking about the meta, the meta universe yeah, in yeah. general. Not the metaverse, but you know, the Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you know, all all of the things that are under the meta umbrella. And yeah, it's not happening tomorrow, but it has been happening particularly for the younger set of folks for some years now. And, you know, chasing the TikTok dream is, I mean, why not? It actually might be fruitful. Uh, you know, the the <laughs> Kim Kardashian saying, hey, I miss the old Instagram. That does matter. It doesn't mean that the company is going to uh, change course overnight. But uh, it does signal that nobody really knows what they're doing right now. I wonder if that's the case. I mean, we heard, we heard the stories, looking at the story, I'm thinking, okay, this is a great uh, jumping off point. The Kardashians will have their own social network with all your feeds, with your friends, and blah, 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 blah. seems like that's just a given, or Instagram will bifurcate, and there'll be another version of it where it's just your friends, and it's different. But I'm wondering if some of this is in reaction to all of the... Um, all of the analysis on Facebook, all of the analysis on Google, Twitter, all, the way you get information. If you have Instagram and you have less scrutiny because you have, you actually have algorithms controlling what you're seeing, eventually Instagram could be a lot more like Netflix where you're not seeing a lot of user-generated content or if it's user-generated, it's like it happens to be by Disney or whomever. This could avoid a lot of trouble long-term because if Facebook wants, sorry, Meadow wants Instagram to keep growing, 
it's got to make sure that it's not being scrutinized heavily by the government. If it controls the feed, that's that's a two it's a double edged sword. Either they can mm. show you stuff and and they can make sure that okay, the stuff you're seeing is completely vetted, or they can say, and that means the government could go, okay, well you're controlling this. That's one thing. Or they can be like, we know we're, we're getting in trouble for this. We're gonna we're gonna make this a whitewash. You're not gonna see anything that'll be controversial because we control what you see. I don't know. I I think uh, I think TikTok is good at that. I mean, and it's controversial because it's a Chinese based company, but it's good at that. And I don't get the evidence that Instagram is good at that. Maybe they'll get better at that. But I I wonder if if this is Instagram and Facebook's AOL moment. We used to be big. We used to be successful and we just couldn't keep up with the time. Honestly, I think Zuckerberg knows that, which is why he's betting on the metaverse and Oculus and uh, and pouring money into that and raising the price of the Quest 2 so, a that, lot. so that he can plow that money into research and development. And there's and hints just, that Facebook's going to, you know, lay off a lot of people. So they're just going to milk too. Facebook knowing it's a dying breed. They're going to milk it till it's done. And Instagram, too. I think they feel like Instagram could survive, but I'm getting the first sense that maybe it isn't. All right, let's check the mailbag. Uh, let's do it. So Comey wrote in about Mike's comment we read in the mailbag from yesterday. Mike was saying, Sony has two short charging cables. I don't like them. Comey says, I actually do. Comey says, when I go on a trip, I have like 10 devices, phones, cameras, headphones, batteries, and USB chargers with a long cable to charge them. If I had long cables to charge everything, a little hotel desk would be totally covered by all the cables. The USB chargers themselves have long cords from the power outlet, so I can put them anywhere. But I prefer a short USB cable between the charger and each device. Comey says, I recently decided to buy short USB cables. While being at it, I converted all of my gadgets to USB-C by attaching mini to C and micro to C adapters. Good work, Comey. Uh, Comey says, I quickly found that the chargers with multiple USB-C ports are more expensive. They have fewer ports than the USB-A versions and aren't as compact as I had hoped. I learned it's because USB-C specs require the charger and each device to negotiate the optimal current reliably, and the circuitry just isn't cheap yet. For now, I had to make a compromise. Keep using those USB-A chargers with these A2C adapters. I hope the USB-C all the way day will come soon. Comey says, though, it's not here yet, at least for the cost conscious. I, 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 my first thought when I read Comey's was, that's genius. My second thought was, Mike should send all his short cables to Comey, and Comey <laughs> should send his long cables to Mike, and then everybody will be happy. It's a exactly. different social network right there. It's just a cable exchange? Is that what you're doing yeah. here? Okay. It's, a, it's our new startup idea. It's going to be huge. Well, and it just goes to show you, it, it really depends. You know, Comey says, you know, I do a fair amount of travel. I kind of like all my stuff in one place. The long cables end up being cumbersome. Um, and Mike had the exact opposite experience. It just depends yeah. on how you use your tech. It's a, it's a style, right? Mike Mike may have fewer gadgets than Comey. I don't know. But Mike just likes to plug them all directly in for whatever reason. And Comey is like, no, no, I plan for this. You know, some people don't want to plan for it. Uh, but I love that. I love that these emails show that, uh, there are different approaches, and it, it kind of depends on what your style is, what, what's going to work for you. Indeed. I, uh, I'm still it, on Mike's side where I'm like, I don't love getting the short cable. I would like that to be a choice that Comey could make and say, yes, please give me the short cable. Sure. Easier to make a longer cable short than the opposite. Uh, thanks, <laughs> to, thanks to everybody. Don't it's just science cables, physics, everybody. Come on. <laughs> you know, what, what are we going to go to Mars next? Uh, thanks to everybody who writes in with questions, comments, and ideas. Please do keep them coming. It makes our show better every day. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Also, thanks to you, Aya's actor, for being with us today. Let folks know where they can keep up with your latest. All right, folks, go to thisoldnerd.com. I'm spending today actually updating the site. It's been like a billion years. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking at this problem with the short cables, long cables. I have a travel bag that's specifically for short cables, and I have long cables for home. I got extension mm. cables for other stuff because sometimes you got to be situationally aware, and then you don't want to think about it. So I have a little bag for travel. In other words, in other words, if you want to deal with all of these things and you want your tech life to be better, go to thisoldnerd.com because we're coming back after a nine-year absence. I was like doing things in between. Ooh. I think I was taking a nap for some of it. But <laughs> since my couch finally came in, I can actually do projects in my home because for so many reasons. You follow me on Twitter. You'll know why. It's at Ayas. And uh, I'm excited. Some fun stuff's coming up. 
Very cool. Uh, we also want to extend a very special thanks, whether you like short or long cables. Mike Escusha is one of our top lifetime supporters for DTNS. Thank you for all the years of support, Mike. Couldn't do it without you. Thanks, also- Mike. Yeah, Sorry. there's also a longer version of the show called Good Day Internet. We call it GDI for short, available at patreon.com slash DTNS. We roll into it right after we wrap up this here show. But just a reminder, we do the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we're back doing it all again tomorrow, talking retro vintage gaming with Dimitri Janakis, a.k.a. the modern vintage gamer. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) 